Hidden behind our own galaxy lies another, around 64 trillion miles away. To the naked eye, it's invisible, but with the right equipment, we are able to see the unseen. Welcome to the channel, my name's Scott Camilla, and in this video, we're gonna attempt to photograph one of the most difficult deep sky targets in the Northern Hemisphere. The target we're gonna be imaging tonight is known as the Hidden Galaxy, because it is literally tucked away behind this gas and dust band of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which blocks out and hides a lot of the light from what otherwise would have been a very large and prominent deep sky object in our night sky. To get the most amount of detail as I possibly could out of this deep sky object, I wanted to make sure I used a telescope with the highest focal length possible that I could afford. The telescope of choice, the Ioptron 6-inch Ritchie Cratian Telescope. This telescope has multiple knife edge baffles, which helps block out stray light that may enter the optical tube, preventing it from reaching the sensor. It's also far lighter than Newtonians or refractors at this focal length, allowing you to use a more affordable mount as long as you still have precise guiding. The only downside about this style telescope is that collimation can be tricky, but if you have the right tools, even those who have never collimated before can do it with ease, and I'll be leaving a great tool for collimation in the description below. Since I'm using a telescope with a focal ratio of f9, which is the speed at which a telescope collects light, and I'll explain that in a separate video later on, I needed to make sure that I used a camera specifically designed for deep space imaging. I chose the 2600 MC Air because it has a wider field of view even with a telescope of this focal length, which ensures that none of the details of this galaxy get cropped out. And as you can see, this is what the field of view with the 2600 MC Air looks like as opposed to the 533 MC Pro. To image this galaxy, we need to make sure that this tripod is set up perfectly. I'm using an older mount at the current moment, the CG5 upgraded with the OnStep GoTo system, and even with the upgraded motors, it still suffers from a significant amount of periodic error if the polar alignment is even a slight bit off. Once the primary and secondary mirrors have adjusted to the outside temperatures, I can start focusing the telescope. Focus also needs to be perfect and guiding needs to be precise because even the slightest deviation can hinder the quality of the subframes. The trickiest part of all of this is that it's not going to be a one night project. We're going to have to collect photons from billions of years ago for many nights until we achieve at least 50 hours of exposure time. So let's get started. 